Hey guys, and welcome back to The Vegan View. I'm Danny. I'm Nisha. I'm Nicole. I'm Hannah. And this is The, the Vegan, Vegan View. View. Today we're going to be talking about what it's like to date a non-vegan or to have someone special in your life who doesn't really share your beliefs and how we all individually deal with it. You guys have vegan boyfriends, husband, okay. almost vegan boyfriend, eh. not vegan <laughs> boyfriend. So. Call him a fake vegan. So Jesse's not vegan. So Jesse is my significant other. He is... Um, We've been dating for six years. We met in college and I was not vegan at all. Like I used to get Korean barbecue, like, I don't know, four or five times a week. Um, Me too. I used to go to that all you can eat like meat place, Fogo de Chao. And we get like coupons and go there all the time. And then one day I was like, just complete 180 and I was vegan. And Jesse was like, what's going on? <laughs> and of course, I'm pretty sure he thought it was a phase. And um, obviously it isn't because three years later, now I have a YouTube channel and <laughs> I talk about being vegan all the time. And um, at first it was really hard. Now he's kind of, I don't know, he really likes eating plant-based, but I wouldn't say he was vegan. If he's at home with his parents, he doesn't want to inconvenience them. So he mostly eats like vegetarian, but he won't eat things like he absolutely won't eat eggs, and he's like funny about certain meats. But um, yeah, he's just kind of freegan. Yeah, <laughs> vegan. So kind of same thing. Austin and I are have been together almost twelve years now, and then so when I went vegan two years ago, he was like, "We are already married," and he was like, "Okay, whatever, Danny. Like you're doing one of your crazy things again, you know?" <laughs> yeah. He was just like not like very responsive to it he was like hey whatever um and then I just got like so passionate about it and to this day like those few months um where before he went vegan and he was so against it at first and he was so argumentative that was like definitely the hardest time in our relationship so I totally sympathize with anyone who's dealing with that with that right now because I know you <laughs> I guess my best advice is to just educate them and I get comments that all the time asking like because I always say, little by little, I just would get Austin to watch a documentary here, documentary there, and I'd kind of like barter with him if he wanted me to like sc scratch his back or something. I'd be like, I'll scratch your back for an hour and a half if you watch this <laughs> documentary or something like that. And he'd be like, okay. Um, just little things like that here and there. Okay, and yeah. it slowly kind of started speaking to him. He started like cutting out red meat. Then he started cutting out dairy. And then, you know, one day... He Finally, it was Gary, Yorosk Gary Yorofsky's best speech you'll ever hear. Mm. That was the one that like clicked with him. And I feel like everyone has a different, like something sets them off in a different way. And you don't know what that is until that person sees or like hears whatever it is for them. So for me, it was just slowly getting the message into his brain, like little at a time. He eventually came over to the, to the light side. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, I, it, it's really hard. It was really, really difficult for a while. When I met my boyfriend uh, about a year and a half ago, I was vegan and he's not vegan. And I think in the beginning I was like really chill about it because I wanted, I didn't want him to think I was like that weird vegan girl. Mm -hmm. And I also didn't want him to think that like vegans only want to hang out with other vegans. I really wanted to show that it's a very easy, natural thing. But recently, actually, now that we've been together for so long and he's seen how much this is a big part of my life and we've had so many conversations that he often agrees, he'll say like, um, you know, the philosophical part of that argument makes so much sense or, you know, it's hard to argue with that kind of logic. You're making a lot of sense. And I'm thinking, yeah, like, don't you want to be vegan now? If we have a conversation and we're kind of agreeing, it's like, and you still aren't vegan after that, I'm like, what more do I need to say to you? What more do you need to see? And so it can be really frustrating because you can be on the same page with so many things, but that doesn't mean that they're just gonna do everything that you do. And mm, it can yeah. be really hard. My boyfriend and I have been together for nine years um, and we were not vegan in college either. Like same as you were Korean barbecue oh and, and Buffalo chicken and like Panda Express and Chipotle, like all the way, like meat was a part of our everyday meals. And um, I had started like very slowly kind of putting things together. It's like there was like a little seed here, a little seed here for me where I was mm -hmm. like, 
huh, that makes sense. I can't ignore that. Um, like one of the first things that comes to mind was I was rescuing dogs and like fostering dogs. And I happened to come across this video on YouTube where there's, it's like at the grocery store. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but it's like pigs at, at the Put grocery store. Put it into the sausage machine. They, yeah, they like pick up a live little baby pig and like Put it in the sausage machine it's not really a sausage machine but they're like oh do you want some sausage and they put the pig in the sausage machine the people are like no 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 oh my god what are you doing don't do that and they freak out and i was like whoa 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 i would have done the same thing as those people but i ate bacon like it was no big deal mm -hmm. and then i was like okay that's so hypocritical of me to like be upset about that and then like not like eat bacon still i feel the same way about dogs i would never want like a dog to be put down at the shelter but i would still like just eat other animals just because I felt like they weren't as smart or cute yeah. or friendly I don't know so that was when I I started like kind of telling Jesse like I feel like this is wrong like I feel like we shouldn't be doing this and he was a lot like Austin where he's like no you're crazy like this is how it's always been like this is what our ancestors did like all this mm -hmm. stuff and he had a reasoning for everything like we were arguing back and forth all the time and um and then I started doing like, I went down the, the Google hole where I started like looking up meat eater arguments, vegan arguments yeah. and all that stuff. And I was like telling him, I'm like, our digestive systems are not made for this. Mm -hmm. Like we're more of herbivores than we are ever om omnivores. Like we're definitely not carnivores. Like it just doesn't make sense. And I was trying to approach it from like a scientific way with him. And he still was like, no, 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 no way. Like, you know, I don't believe it. Like, mm -hmm. where are you getting your sources? You know, he just had questions for everything. And then finally, I remember I was watching Veducated, the documentary, and um, he didn't want to watch it with me, so he was in the other room, and I was watching it, and then I, all of a sudden, I was just like crying, and I was like, you have to come in here, you have to see this, because it was showing some of the factory farm stuff, and I was just in tears, and I was like, how can we do this? Like, we can't do this anymore, we can't do this. And he he's not super emotional, I carry all the emotional <laughs> aspects of the relationship, so he was like, okay, and it really clicked with him. Can I also say something really quickly? When we say Jesse, we're dating two, two different, different Jesses. <laughs> <laughs> we're not because sister wives. <laughs> we could be. We could be though. <laughs>are cooking for your significant other something I really like to suggest is if you're cooking for people who eat meat dairy or eggs I think this is not the time to be healthy um, I think you should really start introducing fat sugar and salt make things look really decadent and delicious and then when you're on your own you can eat your nice healthy vegan heart friendly meals but when you're cooking for someone who doesn't really understand the emotional side, try to make the food as appealing as possible. And for humans, we like things that are fatty, salty, and sweet. So, like mac and cheese. Yes. Mm -hmm. One of the first things I ever made for Nicholas was a vegan mac and cheese. Yeah. And he actually made a vegan mac and cheese for Easter, I think it was. Oh I gosh. gave him the recipe and everyone loved it. He did such a good job. How cute. So I think it's really important to show people that like they're not going to be missing out in that way. Right. They yeah. still get the things they want that they love. Yeah, like when I make my buffalo wings yeah. for meat eaters, my cauliflower wings, I use like tons of veg nays on the sauce. But if I'm making it just for myself, I'll use like avocado mm -hmm. or I'll make like an oil-free ranch with silken tofu. But yeah. I'll never do that for someone who yeah. doesn't eat vegan food. When we first started eating vegan we ate all the vegan junk food mm -hmm. veggie grill all the time because I just wanted to make sure that he felt like he wasn't missing out on things too mm -hmm. so it was like mm -hmm. vegan burgers all the time vegan cauliflower and I really think it takes your palate a while to adjust yeah. before you start actually craving vegetables because he was never a vegetable person like mm -hmm. hated vegetables and then he started like as like the years went on being vegan, he slowly started to crave them more. And he found, I think you find what vegetables you like. Like yeah. he really loves potatoes. And I don't think he ate French fries before, but I don't think he ever really ate potatoes, potatoes before. And now it's like potatoes and beans are such a huge part of his diet. Cause mm -hmm. he doesn't really like like vegetables. Broccoli is about the only vegetable he'll eat, but he's still like, you know, healthy vegan, yeah. mm -hmm. somewhat healthy. <laughs> I showed Jesse a lot of pictures on Instagram of David Carter and John Lewis, I think is his name, Badass Vegan. And they're strong and athletic mm -hmm. and very, they're, chal they're challenging male stereotypes, being vegan and being strong. And I think 
that guys also have a lot of societal pressure to look a certain way. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of just always mentioning, oh my gosh, look at these guys, they're 100% vegan. Mm -hmm. And it really just planted those seeds without telling him, you can be vegan, yeah. come on, hurry up, let's yeah. go. Yeah. yeah. That's a great point because I feel like that was one thing that Jesse was worried about because he's already such a slim guy that yeah, he was he worried gonna be skinny. he was going to be skinny from being vegan and he's not any skinnier than he was before he was vegan but still I feel like when he gets in a group of guys they're like oh but like am I going to be super skinny like if I go vegan and well of course we're giving our experience because at this moment of time we're all dating men but you can kind of apply that if you're not dating a guy and you're in a relationship with someone who identifies as something different, right. you can point out vegan people who are someone they would admire, admire. whether they're, they're artists or musicians or anything that they have an interest in, writers. I think finding someone who you relate to on another level and you can see yourself in them is a big proponent in saying, right. oh, I could be That's vegan because true. they're vegan, right. or I could eat more plants, or being vegan is mm -hmm. kind of normal. <laughs> What were some of the documentaries, books, articles, interviews that were the most influential for your guys? Because I want to take some notes in. Um, I had him watch Forks Over Knives because uh -huh. it was before What the Health. Um, also, I mean, I still think Forks Over Knives is better, better in some ways because it's not like as conspiracy theory-ish. Mm -hmm. Then I had him watch Cowspiracy, which is the environmental effects documentary. And then um, I started watching some... Ones online, like uh, Gary Rossi's... I can't, why can I say that? Gary It's hard to say. <laughs> the best speech ever. And then he found Mike the Vegan. I introduced him to Mike the Vegan, and he's obsessed with Mike the Vegan. I love Mike the Vegan. <laughs> he too. always watches Mike. Like, every new video, Austin's already seen it. <laughs> I know for me, one of the reasons I asked Austin to start watching documentaries was because I wanted his support when I was getting scrutinized by family members I was like can you please that was a kind of how I first like that's a good idea. presented yeah. it before it wasn't like watch this so you go vegan I was like can you watch this so you understand why I'm vegan mm -hmm. so that when your family members are making fun of me you can kind of help like back me up like be on my side a little bit because I think that's like you know that's what you want from a partner is someone who's going to back you up I also have a friend who has a completely different approach because we all have a similar approach in that we kind of wanted, we want, we were firm with our approach of trying to get them to go vegan, but we were also very like, everyone takes their time. But I have a friend who is a little bit more straightforward and it's worked for her. She's now converted two boyfriends to being vegan. And so I was asking her brain, wow. the, I was asking her like picking her brain girl. the other day. I know, I was like, <laughs> tell me what you do. And she said that basically this last time, uh, the, the first one, she was like, I want to watch this documentary, kind of what I said earlier, I need your support. And then they had watched Earthlings. And Earthlings is extremely graphic when it comes to um, the animal abuse. And after watching that, uh, she said a couple days later, he was like eating meat. And she looked at him and was like, do you have no soul? Like, how can you do that? And I thought she was joking and she wasn't. And I was like, you're my hero. Yeah. That is so bold. Cool. She's like, how can you know what you know? How can you see what you saw and still do that? Like, mm -hmm. where where is that excuse? Like, what are you thinking? And it was really just that things weren't firing. And I kind of respect her a lot for that because she kind of didn't care if that meant that they were going to get in an argument or even that they could potentially break up because she was so passionate about it. And I think maybe like that approach doesn't work all the time mm -hmm. if you're only using that approach. But I do think sometimes being a mirror for someone and and just making them, making question, them question and not letting them always get away with everything the easy way might be effective for some people. I feel like that might be a little bit how I was now looking back. <laughs> Austin, what was I like? Yeah, what was she like? <laughs> Not the most easygoing for the first <laughs> week or so, but you, you grew to Mellowed. know what you were doing. I don't even remember us so long ago. Okay. Looking back, I was so <gasps> emotional when I approached it mm -hmm, on so, so many different times. It's like I would read it, I'd get fired up, my blood would boil, I'd sweat, I'd cry, and I'd like immediately have to go tell him like, why, why do we do this, blah, 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 blah. And I just think it was like, he was just like, whoa, 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 like, no, calm down, like, mm -hmm. you're crazy, like, you know those kinds of things. And I think if you can like process the information, think about it on your own, and when you do approach him, maybe be a little bit more level-headed with it.
he was like, okay, well, what do I do then? Cause I don't know what to do. So tell me what to eat. So I was like, okay. I was like, let's look at like where you normally eat and like what the vegan options are there. He loves Chipotle. So I was like, this is what you can order at Chipotle. And then he loves um, like any kind of burrito. So I was like, okay, at El Pollo Loco, you can get this, mm -hmm. you know, at Taco Bell, you can get this. And so we kind of like mapped out places that he could go to if he didn't know where to eat. Mm -hmm. And that helped out a lot because he's also a very picky eater. So I was like worried about that. But Austin comes from a family that eats a lot of animal products. I remember I would go, they still go to steakhouses all the time. Um, but I remember when we were first dating, his dad would take us to steakhouses and he would ask the waiter, what's the biggest steak you have on the menu? Okay, my son will take two. Cause Austin's like a big guy. Mm -hmm. And now that Austin's vegan, I'm like, that's so weird that you used to eat like that. And he's like, you know, the thing is, is I never really liked that. I just thought that that's how I was supposed to eat. Cause mm -hmm. I was a big guy he thought that big guys need to eat a lot of meat and mm -hmm. you know once you you know educate yourself and like look at things a different way like i don't know it's just like a whole new world mm -hmm. you just do so many things because you think that's mm -hmm. what you're supposed to do i do have to give him credit he started following a pig on facebook so he no Aww. longer eats pork yeah. and was it esther <laughs> yes oh <laughs> esther's the best he loves that esther so cute. i know right <laughs> You have to and tell them about Life of Piglet. Okay. It's a bunch of pigs and dogs. Okay. So these are just our personal stories and experiences with our significant others, but we would love to start a conversation in the comment section down below. So tell us if you have a significant other who either is vegan or isn't vegan and your story with that, or if you are on the other side of things and your significant other went vegan first, we would love to hear what strategies worked for you. So please, Go crazy in the comments. We want to hear from you and please join our Facebook group. We have a vegan view Facebook group. We'll link in the description box down below and links to all of our individual channels. If you guys want to see some more vegan content and we'll have our Instagram link down below too, if you guys want to follow us there. So check back next Monday for a new episode and we'll see you then. Bye. Bye.